Thoughts, the Cars Podcast. It's Panorama's number one source for news, reviews, and thoughts about the new wave rock legends, the Cars. Oh, and a little bit of uh, seal wool, sunshine, and rainbows. Welcome to Night Thoughts, the Cars Podcast. I'm Dave. And I'm Donna. <laughs> All right. Well, that, that went well. <laughs> Sorry. Awesome. All right. Donna, I'm in a 1995 kind of mood. Oh, I'm so glad. Me too. Yeah, yeah I'm in a 1995 kind of mood. <laughs> uh, so how, how, old, wait, how old were you in 1995? Me? I yeah. was 21. 21, okay. <laughs> Wait, what? No. You're so gullible. I know, because I'm like, wait, I was 25. 95. <laughs> in 95, I would have been 32. Okay. All right. Yep. 32 years old. Okay. Yeah, because tonight we're talking about the Cars Anthology from Rhino. Yes. Just what I needed. Mm-hmm. Like, they haven't used that title to death. <laughs> you know, they have to kind of, what else can they do, really? Well, in, in all fairness, at that point in time, people hadn't overused just what I needed, um, yeah, I more than likely. Yeah. But, you know, I'm just saying that this this episode tonight is just what we needed, Donna. <laughs> all right, good. Yeah. Excellent. <laughs> yeah. So, how have you been? Have I been? Yeah, how have you been? Um, I've been really good. I've been really good. Super yeah. busy, and um, but good. Uh, I, have you uh, listened to uh, Beatitude? No. What is it? Is it Beatitude or is it Beatitude? It's <laughs> it's it's both. <laughs> That's the kind of crazy I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah. No, seriously, have you listened to it? I have not. The, the reissue, the remaster. No, 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 I haven't. Hey, right. we should give a plug to old Re- Rebellion Masters. Re- I'm sorry, Rebellion Remasters. Yes. Dot com, who who remastered and distributed out the Rico Cassic Expanded Edition. Yeah, what's the deal with those guys? I have no idea. Because but sh- did you know what? He didn't really bite on my hints. Because that's uh, what I was going to ask you. Like, is he going to do it at Niagara Falls? Come on. He should. Right. And he should do Milkwood for crying out loud. Ooh. Oh, yes. Milkwood would be freaking awesome. Yeah. But hmm. I'm well, no expert on, on remastering or sound or whatever, but Dante said that it sounds good. <laughs> better than the original. So I trust in Dante. Exactly. I'll take it. Yeah. That needs to be your next campaign is to like, you know how we sort of, how you kind of, you know, zeroed in on Jeskow and like relentlessly yeah. pursued that until it, you know, till we yes. got what we wanted. Now we need to do that with this, with the, these reissues. Yes. And yeah. maybe just out of, you know, because we pushed Niagara Falls with uh, Greg Hawks. Yeah. Uh, maybe we just need to, we need to push um, Mr. Remasters, Mr. Mr. Rubellin. <laughs> <laughs> I guess this is, is that his first name or his last name? Or <laughs> I don't know. I hey, Ru. Um, you need to get in touch with Greg Hawks and get that uh, Niagara Falls done. And then Milkwood, God knows who owns the right to that. Yeah. Yeah. But I figure if he was able to do Beatitude, he sure as hell should be able to do Milkwood. He's got some kind of in with the Ocasek camp. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. All right. Well. So, yeah, we need to push that. That's that's our next campaign. You get right on that, sir. I don't mind being annoying with people, for I know. sure. <laughs> I know you don't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Speaking of which, on our, um, you know, we're just coming off our turbocharge episode, and and I realize a lot of people, including myself, haven't gone through and listened to the whole thing. Please do. Just go past like what the the ten minute mark, uh, probably fifteen like 20, minute mark, yeah, eighteen minute, twenty minute mark, whatever, and and listen to it because there's there's good stuff in there. But um, why I'm bringing this up is there's a another like review left on the turbocharge page okay (laughs) okay and i don't think i don't think people fully understand that it was night thoughts who you know was promoting 
turbocharge. Okay. So, so up in my my alerts pops up. So and so, um, does not recommend turbocharge. Oh. Okay, so I'll read, and it's in. They say worst thing I've ever watched. To call this air quotes movie is a joke. <laughs> to call this a movie is a joke. Anyone who rec- recommends this is an idiot. <laughs> Okay, so I'm doing my usual thing. I'm laughing my ass off. Right. And then I realized, wait a second. <laughs> They're calling me a freaking idiot. <laughs> and me too. <laughs> yeah. We're just a couple of freaking idiots. We are. I know we are. <laughs> Anyone who recommends this is an idiot. And then they go on about their dollar ninety nine. Holy shit, people. Right. It's a dollar freaking ninety nine. It's not like you coffee. spent seven ninety nine. Right. Or even five ninety nine, which other movies cost you and a buck ninety nine, and some people only ninety nine cents if they get it in SD. Yeah, this is change out of your couch so, cushions, people. I know. Holy crap! Don't <laughs> so you know. I I thoroughly enjoy the bad reviews, but don't give me that bull crap about I want my dollar ninety nine back. Yeah. Because you know it's a dollar ninety nine. If nothing else, consider it an opportunity to educate yourself on something on, on a piece of the fandom. <laughs> exactly right. Now you can speak intelligently about it at all of the cocktail parties where yeah. I'm sure the subject comes up often. Well, that at least sure now you does. can have an informed opinion. You're welcome. Oh, yeah. I, um, <laughs> we knew darn well not everyone would like this movie. Yeah. And some people just don't get it. And it's okay if they don't get it. Right. But it it irks. I mean, and, and we're not coming down on people saying, oh, what kind of Cars fan are you? Oh, if no. you don't get this and don't think this is funny. We're not doing that. No. So it it pisses me off for some for these people that think it was some kind of documentary right. or whatever that don't get it and you know coming down on us and you know you're an idiot kind of attitude right. like, come on man yeah but you know i guess i don't like the personal attacks of like you know what you, you don't have to like it but you know ease up <laughs> yeah ease up ease up you gave totally it a shot up. i yeah, yeah. I, I still think it's hilarious. When I was preparing for this podcast tonight, I was reading over different things, and the the quotes will just pop into my head. I mean, the scenes will yeah. just pop into my head, and I can't help it. It's so funny. It's awesome. Yeah. Anyway. So I know, um, um, uh, I don't know if she wants me to say her whole name or not. I would say Lakin. Lakin, who wrote the um, uh, blog post about the, the passing of Rick. You know what I'm talking about. I posted it. Focus what? Blondie is what she goes by. Her blog. I posted it. Uh, I don't. What? I don't. What does it say? Do you do you blog people not read each other's <laughs> blogs? I I just am sorry. I'm sorry. I bet Lakin's read your blog. Oh, I doubt it. No one reads my blog. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so this is Lake, and I'm not saying her full name. Okay. But her blog is Focus Blondie. Okay. And she, when, after Rick passed, she uh, she wrote a blog post. Okay. About, and now I totally forgot where I was going with this. Um, oh, sorry. Oh, she hasn't, she, the fact that she hasn't seen Turbocharge yet, but she's going to. Okay. Okay. Now I don't I don't know if Lakin will get it or not. I don't know if she'll think it's funny or not. I'm you know I'm not sure you know where, where what camp she's in. You know if she's an idiot like us or if she <laughs> <laughs> or t- or she takes everything too seriously. Who knows? But um, you know I'm sure she's not going to come back at me and say, <laughs> and say well anybody thinks this is a movie is a joke. <laughs> I don't think she's going to do that. You know what it makes me think of? My son Sam is a huge fan of Who's on First, you know, Abbott and Costello. Yeah. He can quote the whole thing. It's hilarious. But it makes me think of somebody who doesn't have that sense of humor watching Who's on First and going, those guys are so stupid. Why can't he figure out what the other guy's saying? It's <laughs> not, why does he keep asking to say, they're not, you know what I mean? Like trying to pick it apart and just be like, yeah. this is so stupid. You know, it's like, no, it's, it's funny. It's meant to be funny. Yes. It's a joke. It's like in the movie Rain Man. You know, it's it's a joke, Raymond. It's a joke. Yeah. It's like lighting never up. never solve it. Its... Yeah. Holy moly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Hey, did you ever listen to any more of Classics Nouveau? No. Don, I'm telling you. No, I'm 
so sorry. And for, and for those of you who don't, obviously don't know what I'm talking about, um, I rediscovered an old uh, new wave kind of gothy uh, band that I listened to in their early, well, their, I think their first album came out in 81. And their name's Classics, Classics Nouveau. And you try spelling Nouveau because people just don't know that word. <laughs> um, but anyway, I, I somehow came across um, their stuff again. And um, I ended up downloading uh, a live uh, show that, I, that has just recently been put out there. And um, the, the, they do an instrumental on their first album called 623. Right. It's just an instrumental. It goes dun 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 dun. Anyway, but <laughs> it, the funny part is I'm listening to this today, and it's so <laughs> it's so hilarious how these um, these British bands or whatever you know they sing and they got you know you can understand everything they say, but then when they talk you can't understand a freaking word they're saying. Yeah. <laughs> and so the guy the guy the lead singer's name is Sal Solo. All right. Okay. And so he's introducing six two three, and he goes, "This is a song six two three. <laughs> What's the name? Six two three. It's making me think of the first time I went to a Kiss concert, and Paul Stanley addressed the the crowd, and he had a lisp, <laughs> and I had no idea. I was shocked. My girlfriend and I were like, "What? Did he just say Seattle? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what just happened?" <laughs> <laughs> Which is, I'm sorry, I would never make fun of the guy in person because I would be suicide. <laughs> but it's like Mike Tyson. Yeah, it's so hilarious <laughs> that Mike Tyson. Hey, this boy, he just said, everybody, it's just it's so ludicrous. It's a ludicrous. <laughs> I know, but it doesn't match up. It's like you gotta be <laughs> kidding me. <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> but, so I don't know. The worst thing I've ever watched to call this a movie is a joke. Anyone who recommends this is an idiot. It's a ludicrous. <laughs> oh, that's funny and stuff. I'll never get back the ninety minutes of my life, and somebody owes me a dollar ninety nine. <laughs> <laughs> gosh um, well no i didn't listen to more of that 623 stuff because i'll tell you what i've been listening to are you there well no i laughed <laughs> <laughs> it just got awfully quiet are, are, are you there <laughs> i was expecting you to go tell me what you've been listening to <laughs> which is great which is a great visual for the people who feel that we're in the same room <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Dave, oh my God, he's disappeared again. Where'd you go? Damn. <laughs> I would completely expect that for you to just slide under the table. <laughs> okay, well, I have been listening to the Montgomery's. They have a new album out called First World Blues. That's, you did that post the other day that had... Oh, I've been talking to so and so from the whatever band, and then blah 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 Montgomery from the Mag Montgomerys, and I've also talked to Jerry Gerald, uh, Gerald Casali. <laughs> yeah, and from the Cas from the Casalis. <laughs> that would have been good, huh? Yeah. Um. Yeah. Well, so the Montgomerys put out this album called First World Blues. It is so so good, and the reason I came across it, I said on the last podcast too, I know, but I have to repeat it because it's so good. Um, Elliot Easton plays on like nine of the tracks, and it's just a great album. It's a really great album. If you don't have it yet, Dave, I'm sending it to you. Because awesome. I think you'll really I, dig it. I think Elliot also played on Six Two Free. <laughs> <laughs> I think not. <laughs> um, I did. And speaking of music, Brett Bassel. Yeah, poor BB. I know. Holy crap. Who is messing with our BB? Yeah. I tell you, well, I tell you what, you you mess with BB's fans and his music, but can you imagine the the uh, terror yeah. of that? I mean, you, well, it's it's very similar to going through the identity um, mm -hmm. thief, right? Stolen you know, identity, kind of stuff, yeah. Thievery. yeah, yeah, stolen identity deal. I I I've been through that, and uh, you know, it's scary. Yeah. So for, and, and so, you know what? It's always some little weasel in India <laughs> or some some third world African nation. It seems like, you know what I mean? Seems, I know. I they know do that kind of crap. Little little weaselly, 
technological people. Right. right. Stuff like that. And I just, uh, I, I just can't understand it for one, but I, I totally agree. And for people who don't know, our dear friend, Brett, ba- Brett Bassel had his music ripped off and re packaged under some stupid, <laughs> stupid. <laughs> the stupidest names ever. <laughs> so stupid. I'm sorry. BB, I'm sorry. I don't mean to laugh, but you know, they're taking these things and it has nothing to do with the freaking song. Oh, I know. And they're just so ridiculous. Ugh, I was, I, I, I was listening to this song called extra pickle and mayo. And it, was, <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was my song. Wancha. I just, <laughs> Or that beautiful ballad, um, yeah. Tennis Shoes and Sweat Socks, yeah. formerly known as Call On Me. <laughs> just, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Makes me cry every time I hear Tennis Shoes and Sweat Socks. <laughs> it just really tugs at my heart. Yeah, it's like, okay, so that's what makes me think it's some person that doesn't have a grasp of the English language, right. obviously. Yeah. Because why would they do that? They've I, obviously done it through Google Translate. <laughs> I agree. That would have been that must have been so scary for him because, in so many ways, the internet, like all of that, it's all very daunting and like people can can hide behind web pages. Yes, you know, and you can't. Yes. How, how to infiltrate into who the real people are behind that is seems to me to be a very scary and unknown world. You'd have to, yeah, you know, really have someone helping you dig to get through these firewalls and phony names and whatever. Yeah. So I'm really so happy for him that he was able to get to the heart of it. But man. Yeah. Well, I, I don't know if you know this or not, but uh, BB and I we're we're on the hunt for these guys. And one day, whoever did this is going to be walking down an alley. <laughs> and at the end of the alley, he's going to see two silhouettes. One's going to be holding a guitar. <laughs> that's BB. I'm sure. yeah, that's that'll be BB. The other one's going to be holding a lightsaber. That'll be me. <laughs> <laughs> and he'd be like, "What? What do you guys want? What? Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. Aren't you the uh, the guy who put out tennis shoes and sweat socks? <laughs> and then then the beating shall commence. Yes. Well, actually, well, I'll be beating and Brett will be singing along to it. <laughs> <laughs> He'll be singing some sort of inspirational Dave Curry song, you know, to just like get yeah. you hyped up. Yeah, sort of the exactly. equivalent of the Rocky theme. <laughs> this is my new song. <laughs> you shouldn't have stole my songs, asshole. That's, what <laughs> That's <it's>. right. <laughs> Featuring <laughs> David Curry. That's right. But <laughs> in, in all seriousness, I'm glad that that they got that resolved, and I'm glad that people came through. Yeah. To uh, get that resolved, because that's that's ridiculous, you yeah. know, that's somebody's livelihood. And, and now, you know, kind of the cool thing that I think about Brett is that now he's having gone through it once himself. He's opening himself up to, hey, if anybody else has issues, is worried about their, you know, whatever, he he's kind of um, presenting himself as willing to give somebody else a hand if they're if they've got issues in yeah. terms of you know helping people find find out how to get their music back yeah and there's there were two other artists mm-hmm. that had along with him too yeah which is just nuts yeah wow 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 so, yeah that was some excitement plus i'm glad he uh glad he got that taken care of yeah, so yeah. anyway bb if you really want to do that alley thing i'm completely <laughs> with you just saying yeah. All right. Nice. Make sure someone videos it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. Hey, um, one yeah. thing I wanted to tell you about is, I don't know, I can't remember if I talked to you about this in real life or not. Like, this isn't real life, but uh, <laughs> that, uh, you know, everybody knows, you know, it's no secret. You know, I'm Mr. Steel Wool. I get grumpy at certain things. Yeah. And honestly, there's certain kinds of posts that just, drive me up the wall i just ugh, you know and (laughs) you know there's like there's certain pages that i just i can't i can't be a part of those groups anymore you know because you know we've talked about this before there's a uh, probably 3.2 million pages about the cars and (laughs) the the same five people post the same crap on every 3.2 million you know pages and there's just certain things that drives me up the wall yeah and so I I follow two pages, um, ours. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> um, 
the turbo, well, actually three, the turbocharged one, and then one just called the cars. And I think I follow that one because it's got the most people. What about my well, sweet purple June page? Oh, yeah, I follow that, too. Okay, good. Go ahead. Um, so, you know, when you get on Facebook and you open up your feed, you know, you'll see so-and-so posted on the cars and blah, blah, blah. Right. Well, you know, they're in the midst of all those, there are certain posts that just drive me up the wall. Yes. And I discovered that if you click the three dots in the upper right-hand corner, you know, let's say if it's, you know, Frankie Smith. Okay. Frankie Smith is, you know, post something. I'm like, oh, God, Frankie, you're killing me. <laughs> and if I go up to the three dots, it'll say hide all by Frankie. Nice. Boom. I can click that and I don't have to look at Frankie's bull crap anymore. Right. Nice. So. <laughs> so just so people understand where I'm coming from, if you're one of these people and you're on the cars page, I'm probably not going to see your posts. OK, because eventually I'm going to hide you. So, like, for example, um, anybody who does the orangey sky thing. Oh, no, right, right. I'm sorry. I'm going to hide you. I see it to death. Even if it's like, I was out with a family. Oh, look, it's an orangey sky. You're done. <laughs> look at my picture. It's an orangey sky. No, sorry. I'm hiding you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> anything that has the use of uh, or some or oh. or I'm using air quotes. Oh, beautiful, Ben. <laughs> no, sorry. I'm hiding you. No offense. I, I'm sorry. I can't take it. What about? Nobody, nobody says, oh, beautiful, Greg. What about my <laughs> my beloved lefty? Does that count? Yes. Oh, yes. Okay. That, chick, that, chick, that chick who's got a thing for young Elliot Easton and old Elliot Easton. She's something. <laughs> I've, yeah, I've, I've been her a long time ago. <laughs> uh, I haven't seen her in quite a while because I, I hit her a long time ago. Mm-hmm. Um Anybody, <laughs> anybody, and this is my new one, anybody who posts on a daily basis of how much they miss Rick. Um. And I think, my God, Paulina doesn't even post every day how much she misses Rick. <laughs> I mean, in all seriousness, how can, uh, as a fan, how can, how could you be so down in the dumps every day since September that you feel like you have to post on social media, oh my God, I miss a smile? Well, something's not right there, lady. Just saying. But it's not the that's not the bat shittest craziest we've seen people. Well, no, but I'm just saying, you know, are it, that's I don't know. It's, anyway, <laughs> that's okay. You don't person. have to take it. That's the thing. You don't have to take it, Dave. Yeah. You just hide those people left and right. You go for it. You just hide it. That's right. You customize yeah. your social media experience, Dave. You have the power. Exactly right. right. Yes. So, you know, it all comes it all comes down to being needy of adult attention or you're, any attention. You're, you're needy of adult attention? No. People oh. <laughs> who are needy of adult attention oh, is see. why they, you know, over like over posters we've talked about. Yeah. People who post stuff that just isn't interesting. Um, even though they think it is. You know. <laughs> it's hard because I remember getting into the fan groups and just being so excited about the cars. That I'm sh- Oh, I know. Yeah. I was right. You would have hid me. If you had known about that, you, we would never be friends. You would have hid me a long time ago. And, then, <laughs> <laughs> and so when people, you know, you get the newbies coming in going, oh, hey, put your put the albums in order, your favorite, you know, or yeah. those kind of – and I – you know, think party is just like, oh, I've read that so many times. But then also I just re- try to remember, you know, I just love that there's Earn new it. people rediscovering the band, yes. you know, and yes. because because it does seem to come in waves, too. There'll be it all does. of a sudden yeah. there'll be a whole bunch and of there, new names. There, there's a new. Well, since Rick passed away, there's a new wave yes, coming in for sure. Um, yeah. And I, I, I give those people a you know, a pass unless they're freaky deaky like beloved lefty girl. Um <laughs> But, but you know, I mean, yeah, and, and I, I, I welcome those people. You know, a fan is a fan is a fan. But there are certain things that are irritating to yeah. me yeah. for probably three reasons. One, just because I'm easily irritated and I'm an <laughs> asshole. And two, I've been in the fandom a long time and yeah. seen it go round and round and round. Yeah. And I forgot three. So three would be um, I'm just forgetful. Free. So, <laughs> I think I'm say refer six, back two, to number three. one. <laughs> I'm free. Uh, um, yeah. So, are you in my? Are you in the big people group? Yes. Do you ever, do you ever see that one? Okay. 
Yeah. Because, yeah, so for people who don't know, I'll just segue into this little announcement. <clears throat> I started a group for, um, it's called Remembering Big People. And Six, two, three. <laughs> and it's all about big people. Who was made up of uh, Pat Travers and Jeff Carlisi and Ben Orr, of course, and Derek St. Holmes and Liberty DeVito. And, and um, classic Nouveau. <laughs> Lesser, yeah, the, not very known fact that. Um, yeah, they, they were, were the back original backup band to the to the band. <laughs> the backup band to the yeah. Yeah. Um, and then and Rob Wilson, I haven't talked much about Rob Wilson in that group yet, but he replaced Pat Travers after Pat left, and he's pretty significant in it too. So I'm gonna get stuff going on there. But the cool thing is Jeff Carlisi contributes stuff as well as Liberty DeVito um, and Joe Deliro, who was the tour manager for Big People, have all been really great about sharing information, sharing photos, um, bringing some new things to light. And so the group is all about for me, it's all about trying to archive and and keep track of that you know, very short lived piece of history. Um, and so, uh, and we did uncover um, new footage of Ben and big people playing at Pompano Beach. Um, it's not the greatest footage because it's somebody, you know, somebody in the audience holding a camera. It's what was it, somebody drawing uh, a series of pictures and then putting them together in a GIF. Oh, wait, did we talk about this already? <laughs> That sounds vaguely familiar. <laughs> no, but uh, <laughs> but that it's is close. Uh, you know, I made a comment about God. I'm getting motion sick or whatever when you oh, posted yeah, yeah. that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, because it is. It can be hard to watch, but um, there are definitely some nuggets of great footage in there, and particularly the audio is really good. Um, so it's definitely worth watching. I think I've watched it several times. I really liked it, and um, it was cool too because. Jeff told me that Liberty, that all the guys were just blown away. Like they, were, they had never seen it before themselves. And so they were super excited. And Jeff said, um, he said, man, listening to the audio is really good audio. And he said, I, I, I became a fan of the band after I watched that concert because he says, you know, playing in the band is one thing. But then he's like listening back to us. He's like, man, we were good. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. You guys were so awesome. So anyway, so that's fun. So people out there on Facebook, Facebook land, come find my group, Remembering Big People. All awesome. Right. Here, listen to this, Don. I never thought to do this. <laughs> Did you hear it? <laughs> yeah, I heard it. 6-2-3. <laughs> 6-2-3. <six> <laughs> there you go. Perfect. Maybe we'll open the episode six, with that. 6 2 Hey. Okay, anything else, huh? Yeah, that was going to say, this is the last thing before we, we get to, uh, what was this episode about? <laughs> uh, 1995, yeah, anthology. 1995 and 623. <laughs> um, I have on here in my notes, collecting shit, all right? Okay. So <laughs> here's the deal. 2020 is going to be the year of the great purge in my household. Oh, okay. Um, you know, we've got got children who are now adults that still have stuff in the house okay and space is you know storage space that kind of stuff it's like i don't have that much storage space so i keep telling everybody hey 2020 is the year of the great purge which means i'm not going to be having a garage sale i'm going to be <laughs> donating and throwing away yeah and but then i i was like in here in, in the podcasting den and i realized Holy crap. I got rid of all of my car stuff, however many years ago that was. Right. Uh, and I'm looking and I'm like, I'm almost back in the same boat. Well, not, not in certain areas. I'm not, but I'm back in the same boat of having all this car stuff again. You know, <laughs> since since that time that I gave it away, I'm like, holy crap, <laughs> you know, with the podcast and you know, turbocharging and all that kind of stuff. So um, I want I wanted to tell you and put this on here publicly that on the back of my uh, move like this autographed picture. Yeah. That was um, sent to me from the management. the uh, yeah management. I uh, can't remember the OK management uh, for the 
um, monitor mixes. Right. Uh, I, I have a note on the back that says, send all of my car stuff to Donna. <gasps> a sweet per- you Okay. Do? So just, yeah. No. So Dave, when you die, I get it all. <laughs> oh, that is so, oh wait, you'll be dead. I know, right? Oh. All that yeah. did, it, that's exactly what went through my head. Oh, I get a, a oh, oh, I'll be dead. Oh. Okay. Uh, anyway, so I have to at the back there. So this recording and that note should suffice if there's some kind of weird legal action. You know? <laughs> I know Chris is like, no, so not like, doing it. No, no. That that um, that uh, Night Thoughts uh, sign, oh, no, that is to stay with us. <laughs> yeah, you know, that means a lot to us. Those pins, yeah, no, no. But, I mean <laughs> – you know, I'm, I'm back in the same boat where I've got all this stuff and plus all the CDs that I have. Holy crap. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. So anyway, just to let you know, I've got that on the back That's uh, of that thing saying, hey, something happens to me. And of course, the thing is, it's going to be kind of like a mystery, even though I've told Chris, hey, this is back here. It won't be until they um, take down the picture <laughs> <laughs> and look at the back and go, oh, shit, we were supposed to send all this stuff to this Don- Donna. Well, now that I know, <laughs> as soon as you die, I'll be calling him up. Exactly. Hey, I know exactly. Dave died yesterday, <laughs> and I know I get all his car stuff, so hey, chop, chop. Hi. Oh, hi, Chris. How you doing? Yeah, this is Donna. Um, uh, <laughs> sorry for your loss. By the way, um, <laughs> there's <laughs> – When you pack up my stuff, which I know you're going to do very soon, don't forget to add in those one buttons. Look around. If you can't yeah. find them, just look around. <laughs> you will find them. You'll find him. Yeah. 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 And don't worry about taking files and stuff off his laptop. Just send me the laptop. Exactly. Just send me the whole thing. Yeah. So anyway, I'm I'm trying to be more, um, you know, uh, what's the word? Generous. Ter- no. Oh. <laughs> I'm always generous. Yeah, that- I'm trying to live a more a more simplistic life. A minimalist. Um, what do they call that? Minimalist. Thank you. Um. <laughs> See, this is where the migraine meds come in, Donna. It's another one. I don't have a headache. I'm not, you know, whatever right now, but I can't think of shit at this point in time. So so it'd be interesting. All right. So how about we get to our our episode? Okay, wait just a sec. I have a couple other things. Because you keep saying stuff, and then I'm like, oh, yeah, that makes me think of this, makes me think of that. Is that okay? Six, two, three. (laughs) I'll make them fast, I promise. Okay, so one is... If people don't know, there was recently uploaded on YouTube a rare and not heard before concert uh, from the cars at the Paradise in Boston uh, from 1977. This was before they got signed, and it has some uh, cool songs on there that you don't hardly ever hear. So, Like? Fine. Well, for the one that I was particularly excited about, <laughs> what was that? That was... That was one of the early car songs. This is 63. Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, one of the one that I really liked was there's a song that Elliot sings called "I Don't Want to," and I, also I, known as. This is 63. <laughs> All right. Um, I I need to listen to it more closely because I've only heard one other version of him singing that. I can't make out many of the lyrics. Um. But that I was super excited to have another recording <laughs> That's of that. That's because Elliot Easton is the exact opposite of British singers. <laughs> he can when talks, totally understand. When he sings, oh, <laughs> blah, 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 blah. Right? <laughs> he gets that from Rundgren, because you know. <laughs> yeah. Um, so anyway, so very exciting. So if uh, if you uh, you can and should. So that. Hmm? But that recording's not available. To purchase or anything, right? Not that I've seen. No. It's just like it's just like it, it's bootleg. Yes. At this point. Yeah. Um, Which leads us back to our our friend Rue from Rubel and Remasters. Yeah. That'd be another one you should do. I know. Well, see, and just yeah, the cars. Come on, the the Agora. You know, I really hoped that when they put out the Agora, that they were kind of going to start focusing on, you know, reissuing some of the stuff or getting it getting mm-hmm. things out there and this would be a great this is another great example there's a ton of great shows out there the the cars at the old waldorf in 1978 is an excellent excellent show there's just a lot of live shows that they could do 
do you do you think that um the the beatitude expanded edition sold well i don't know he hasn't said anything about it i know that there was one that he was talking about on twitter today that has sold out and he's ordered more but he hasn't said anything about rick okasek Hmm. So I, I wonder know. when I tweet him saying, hey, if you do anything cars, you know it's going to sell well. And if it hasn't, <laughs> well, I was thinking, that guy's just a liar. <laughs> yeah, yeah, who's that dork? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'd be curious to know. Um, because, of course, then there is a difference between Rick-focused and cars-focused. Yes. Because that's the same. Like, because I, I didn't buy it, but I, you know, not a, I enjoyed the solo albums when we you know, when I purposely listen to them to podcast on them and stuff, they were good, but they're not anything yeah. that I go back to regularly. Yeah. You know? So, but you know, but releasing that stuff that that has never been available on CD before, I think is big. Yes. So if you know, so going back to Niagara Falls and Milkwood, holy crap. Yes. Well, Milkwood was released in Asia, or whatever, but I'm sure it was a freaking bootleg. It probably was <laughs> official in Turkey. Yeah. Um. Uh. Well, uh, they, if they did another record store day type of thing, like they did with the Agora, that would be really cool. Mm-hmm. Um. Because then it's a it's limited limiting their exposure maybe or their risk by making a you know here's our five thousand copies of the album, boom, and then it gives the fans an opportunity, you know. And of course they did put it out digitally, so I don't know. To me, that seems like a win win. Yeah. Certainly. I say go for it. Um, okay, one of the other things I was going to tell you when you start talking about 2020 is um, there are some cool things in the works for 2020 in terms of commemorating 20 years since Ben passed away. Um, not in any kind of morbid way, but just exciting stuff. I, I... <laughs> any morbid? Well, you know, we're not gonna, it's not going to be. Well, like a Broadway show. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, not that either. I just want, I just already, like, as I work on all this big people stuff, I just get more and more um, immersed in his life in those last two years. And mm-hmm. it, and so sometimes it's very melancholy for me, but other times it's just so cool. And there's so many little tidbits that I think that are going to come out. Um, and Kurt, Gabriel and I are working on it, you know, 20 years after big people, just that, something, you know, I don't know. I just think that this. I think. When I pass away, Kurt's going to do a memorial shirt of me. It's just going to be a picture of you holding all my shit. <laughs> going, yeah, baby, yeah. <laughs> Winner. That's right. What a windfall. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. What if I pass away before you? Wouldn't that be so sad? Oh, wow. What am I going to get? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. I'll put I'll put a note that you taffy? get all my stuff. Yeah, you get a whole bunch of Huckleberry Taffy. I'll get put a note that you get all my stuff. But you have to like cry for like at least a month. Like oh, the provision will be like you don't get it until you've mourned a sufficient amount of time. Yeah. Well, because <laughs> honestly, I'll be like every day, I'll be posting something like. <laughs> I miss her I, smile. I, I I miss her laughing at my dumb jokes. <laughs> yeah, because you know no one else is gonna do it. I miss I I miss her sweet sweet taffy. <laughs> I, I miss her gush. <laughs> uh, well, I think that's appropriate. If people bring you it up in the in the forums, are just gonna go oh, beautiful Donna. <laughs> oh my beautiful beautiful Donna. My, my, my beloved lo- righty. My, 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 my beloved righty. <laughs> my beloved. <laughs> My beloved Spud. Spud. (laughs) Oh, my goodness. Yeah, well, I'm going to make sure that that happens somehow. (laughs) Well, that podcast, I used to be able to listen to it, but once so-and-so died, (laughs) whoa. It's just like. It's like the pity party podcast. Yeah, just... yeah. Oh, yeah. You can. You have to have a memorial pod for me. I, I, you, you have have guests come on and like night thoughts. This is Donna Sweet Purple June episode 157. Uh, this episode, I'm going over more shit that I got from Dave when he died. <laughs> this is part six of the <laughs> of my um uh, inventory that I received from. 
Mr. Curry. <laughs> there we go. As more comes in, I'll do more podcasts. That's right. Stay tuned, folks. I got a whole other box of stuff that just arrived. <laughs> yes. Make sure and go by my my eBay store. <laughs> <laughs> As I sell off my inheritance piece by piece, <laughs> some real gems in this, let me tell you. <laughs> well, we know that there's a, there's a few people out there that be paying you top dollar. <laughs> oh, and believe me, I'm going to make sure I get top dollar. <laughs> I'm not one of these generous so, school teacher types that, you know, just if, give stuff away in order to pass on if, kindness and peace. In Forget any that. way, That's the right. dark lord of Ordor. Would oh. contact you. You tell him to go suck it. Oh my god! No, no, no! I'm gonna lead him on for like a really long time. <laughs> I would be like, oh yeah, this was signed. This was signed by all the band members and their wives and their kids. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I but somehow, somehow, I took a shower with <laughs> with with the with the tape case. I don't know how it happened. <laughs> But I'm st- I still want four hundred dollars for it. That's right, <laughs> that's right. And then I'll, then at the end, the twist will be like, "Hey, is this is this the Dark Lord? Forget it, man. I'm not selling you anything. You can suck it." No. Yeah. No way. No way, man. No way. <laughs> oh, else I'll just sell him back his own stuff. I'll like <laughs> I'll pretend I'm selling <laughs> stuff from you, but then I'll you know sell him pictures of himself with Ben. Wouldn't it be hilarious? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that would be awesome. <laughs> so, so, you know what would be fun is to take take one of his pictures that he has with Ben and and do the fake Ben autograph next to Ben and then the fake Dark Lord of Ordor autograph. <laughs> Put it on eBay. Please, <laughs> Can you please make that graphic. <laughs> please. <laughs> Dark I love the Dark love. Lord of Wars. <laughs> 95. <laughs> post, post it on his page. Hey, look what I just got in the mail. Well, we'll just post it in the group because we know it'll make its way to his page. And then he'll be impotent to do anything about it because it's in our group. <laughs> The other thing I'd like to start doing is taking uh, pictures pictures of Olga Ormance and photoshopping her in them with Ben. Just saying, oh, my God, it was true. (laughs) Oh, my gosh. After that one one Photoshop job that you did where it looked like he was back there in the 50s with his quote. Remember that one? (laughs) You could totally make a believable um, Olga one. Oh my God. <laughs> Don't believe everything you see on the internet, partner. <laughs> partner. Is that real? Is that real? <laughs> even me. I was like, wait, what? Do you, do you even read? <laughs> Don't believe everything you see on the internet. Where are you seeing this? On the internet. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, but okay, I, I get it. I get it. Ha ha. <laughs> is this a real picture? When yeah, we just it's, take? it's all we cared about was the photograph. Now, wait, now, where did you get that? Like, I'm sure that this is some kind of trickery, but it's so good. I never did post the picture that I used her with the guy, whoever the guy was. <laughs> yes, he you took showed his me. face off there and it's like, ugh. <laughs> Suddenly his, his body does not appeal to me anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Poor guy. <laughs> <laughs> like, he has some lounge singer. I don't even know why. <laughs> He had to pay those women to stay for the picture. Oh, man. Well, which I'm sure it looked fine before, but then you put Ben on, and then you take Ben off. It's all it's all down. Yes. Forget it. <laughs> Should have made a gif of that. Just Ben, <laughs> lounge lizard. Ben, lounge lizard. Oh, my gosh. Funny stuff. Okay, last one right. I promise, and then I know, and then we'll get into it. Because I had to tell you what um, – did you see that post by from Danny Ayala – about yeah, he was asking like, what deep cuts would you want to hear the band play? Oh yeah. And I, so of course I suggested some from Panorama, but he had someone he had commented that uh, he wished he could play every song on Panorama or something. And I said, oh my gosh, we need to have a concert. Wouldn't this be so awesome, Dave? Like Cars Con or something, have yeah. a concert that's just the Panorama album beginning to end. Yes. Wouldn't I that agree. rock? Oh, I want Which- that. Which leads me back to other people that I hide. Yes. If you're a Cars cover band and you're hokey, 
Oh I will hide you immediately. If you have a wig, you're done. If you have if you have a Rick wig, <laughs> or a Ben hoping. wig, a Ben wig. Those are even the, worse. The mullets, the blonde mullets. <laughs> Stop. I'm not gonna say. I'm not gonna say it. I'm not in the uh, context of Rico, but that, <laughs> that Staten Island rock. Fest, <laughs> he says, "Holy crap." Those blah blah guys, they're like a dead ringer. <laughs> a dead ringer for the cast. <laughs> That's is that guy's hair really blonde or is that a wig? I I can't tell. I I don't know. It's like the all the characters in Turbo Charge. You can't tell <laughs> which one's a bad wig, which one's just bad hair. <laughs> Oh, my gosh. Wow. <laughs> Can I just tell you, Sam will say out of the blue, all of a sudden, he'll just, <laughs> he'll just go, he'll like walk past me and go, wasting all my time. <laughs> <laughs> of course, my, like Pavlov's dog, I immediately hear that sound, whoop, <laughs> Every time he gets there. <laughs> he goes, my dollar ninety nine. <laughs> Somebody owes me dollar ninety. You know what I had to do? I had to contact that person who left that thing and say, right. where do I send the buck ninety nine to? That's right. I'll send you I'll, two bucks. No problem. I'll tell, yeah, I'll send you dollar ninety nine because I'm an idiot. <laughs> How how long have we been going on this podcast and we still have yet to get to our oh subject? Gosh, like almost an hour. I know. We have to... So now it's like two podcasts in a row that we have to go, people, skip ahead like 20 minutes. Or in this case, 45. 45 minutes and then we get to the topic. That's right. If you're looking for actual content, you're going to want to dive in a little deeper. Uh, yeah. You know. Oh, we can, we can all put the sound quality so bad that they don't hear what we're saying. <laughs> <laughs> <That's what> we... <laughs> we probably sound way, like sound your chroma. Was good. Huh? Our sound quality was good with Jessica. Yeah, yeah, it was fine. It was good. Yeah, yeah. it was good. <laughs> so we, we should be proud of that. We should, yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. So are we ready to get into it, Donna? Oh, please, yes. Okay. <clears throat> ah. As I said, I was in a 1995 mood, and it's because we are talking about the Cars Anthology, released by Rhino in 1995. Yes, November Donna, 7th. Yep. Give us the facts. Ah, well, there's not a ton. Um, but yeah, they uh, got together apparently. Uh, and I, I really was trying to follow up and see if anybody could tell me if they actually were physically in the same room. Because I read a couple of news articles. Um, Jim Sullivan, who writes for the Boston Globe, he wrote a, a long, extensive article about this, the anthology which got picked up by a ton of newspapers. So I found a whole bunch of clippings, but they were basically all the same story by Jim. Um, But then I did find find someone, uh, Chris Dickinson wrote his own article about it, which was nice. But in both of, so in both Chris Dickinson's article and in Jim Sullivan's, they talk about, um, you know, they touch on the idea that the band was not, Rick and Ben were still not reconciled, Mm -hmm. um, that there had been some discussion of trying to get the band back together a couple years prior to this, and Ben was unresponsive, um, is what I think Greg is quoted as saying, <clears throat> that, you know, Ben was having none of it. and um, But somehow they were able to work together to put together this anthology, and so I was curious, I wonder if they got it, it, together as a group or if they were just all given files and said, you know, vote on what you want on the anthology or what. I'm not exactly sure how they how they came up with their final list, but um, it's two discs, two CDs, 40 songs all together, and it's a mix of um, their greatest hits, of course, uh, and some of their deeper cuts a little bit, and then it's mixed in there with their B-sides, um, it's mixed in there with some unreleased tracks um, that had, that were new at that time, um, and uh, it got positive press. I mean, I think people really liked it. It was really a cool thing for them to do. At the time this came out, you know, in 95, this was, you know, the beginning of the the, the uh, Internet as far as um, the Frozen Fire email list. Mm-hmm. And 
I don't think a lot of people were were aware that this was even going to be released. I mean, I I don't remember hearing about it beforehand. Mm -hmm. When when this was released, I was in, of all places, Circuit City. Um, And I I always had this habit of if I was in a store that sold records, whatever, I'd always just go check out and see what they had in the cars. Right. And so I go over there and to see something different, you know, in the bin or whatever. I was like, holy crap. I mean, I can just remember the excitement. I was like, what is this? And yeah. seeing it and the, 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 the glitter, the purple glitter of it all. And I ended up buying it on CD and I was just, just getting into buying, um, CDs, you know, like off the bat, but I also bought it on cassette. You did? Was and, it on cassette? Yeah. It was never on vinyl, though, which think about what a kick ass vinyl that would have been. Uh, but yeah, I bought it on cassette. But the, the cassette um, was packaged just like the CD is, which had the, the outer sleeve that was, um, you know, glittery and so mm-hmm. forth. And then the inner sleeve. Uh, but, you know, it was, it was incredible. And it wasn't so much the fact that it was you know, another greatest hits that struck me is that you see all these song titles of things that you'd never heard before. Right. And that, and that includes the B sites because, you know, the point in time, uh, that I was, you know, into purchasing music or whatever, you know, I would buy the album. I would buy the cassette at that time. I wouldn't buy 45s anymore. Right. So, you know, all those B sides I'd, I'd never heard of before. Um, with the exception of uh, breakaway somehow, I picked up that 45 or got wind of the breakaway or something and I picked up that 45. So I'd heard that one before, but, um, you know, uh, don't go to pieces. I'd never heard before. That's it Mm -hmm. before. So this was big for me. And so, you know, I, I bought it, went home. First song I listened to was take me now. I mean, I just went right to it. Yeah. And, you know, it's just one of those defining moments in fandom when you remember where you were and um what you're doing and how you felt the first time you heard a song yes and i didn't even and the funny thing is i had a cd player this was my crazy first wife by the way um. when i was married at the time and um we had a cd player in the living room but i didn't listen to it in there i went into the den and put it into my computer and listened to it in the computer um, so my, you know, my memory is putting it in there and pulling up, take me now and, and just, um, diving right in, d- diving right in. Yeah. But the first Ben's vocal being very haunting to me because it's got that reverb mm-hmm. and just going, wow, this is different. And, but, um, you know, it still reminded me of the stuff that I'd heard from cap and swing before and, um, you know, that kind of thing. But this, you know, then again, this was the this was that period of time in 95, um, 94, 95, that people started sharing stuff through the Frozen Fire email list and and so forth. Right. And, you know, I'd heard some of those cap and swing songs, but um, this was big. It was yeah. big. Yeah. Um, well, and of course, you know, I came in late in the game and I and I can't remember how this came on my radar, but I. I remember it being very expensive um, in general, so I had to kind of wait until I found. I think I, I think I got mine for like twenty bucks or something. I had to wait until I found it at a, a price I thought was reasonable, and then after I got it, I was just like, "Oh man, this is so worth it!" I I would totally have paid yeah. more um, because even though the songs were um, already uploaded to YouTube when I got in the game. I don't know, it's just something different. This The booklet that comes with the anthology is amazing. And then, mm-hmm. yeah, the cover, it's just, it's all so different and it's so exciting. It's so bright and I don't know. I don't know. It, it reminded me of, you know, there's a period of time where after the cars broke up that I would have these dreams of a new Cars album. I know it sounds so stupid. <laughs> But, I mean, you know, this is the kind of stuff that, you know, when you like music or like a band that much, you have dreams of. Oh, yeah. And seeing this in the store, it was like, oh, my God, is this real? You know, it was yeah. just surreal to me. 
Well, and this was before Ben passed away, so it's not like he could come visit you in the night. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sure. Yeah. So on, um, on Amazon, you can you, – they don't sell it, but you can get it new and used um, on Amazon starting at 1134. Oh, good. So it's still reasonable. Yeah. I would say brand new is obviously the premium that you're going to be paying for this baby. Right. Right. Um, yeah. So you're. do you want to go through the songs or would you yeah. want to hit liner notes first? Um, let's do liner notes. Okay. <clears throat> um, which the liner notes are written by Brett Milano. Um, and Brett is the one, Dave, you would remember that he's the one that moderated the Boston Book Event. Yes. Yes. Um, super nice guy. And he's written several of his own books about um, rock and roll and and Boston in particular, which is really cool. His his narrative is very thorough. Um, and if you think about it being in 1995 that he wrote this, um, there are very few. The only thing that I think I noted that was not correct was that Greg was in the band first. Yes. But, but boy, that that was just a an embedded fact in air quotes about <laughs> Greg that didn't come out until really recently. So, I mean, everybody assumed that was, yeah, that that was the thing. I'm surprised that the band themselves didn't correct him though, but maybe they also forgot that Greg was not there. Yeah, they might have. Yeah. So, um, but a very you thorough about, history. You think about the time that, you know, the two times we've talked to Greg and we ask him questions that we feel like, Oh God, yeah, he'll totally remember. And he's, and he's not sure, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. And in, in many ways, it's it's, you know, similar to what we go through in our own lives, but on a different level. Mm -hmm. When you think about experiences and, you know, what kid lived down the street and things like that. Yeah. I've tried to think back to some of my stuff because I thought about that before as I've been talking to people these last couple of weeks and asking them about things that happened 40 years ago. And they're just like, well, gosh, you know. And so I started trying to think of, like, what could I remember from – if someone said, you know, tell me about your college days. would be like, oh, I don't know, took some classes. I mean, you know, like, it's hard <laughs> to remember So how much worse it would be for someone else who's researched your whole life and goes, do you remember when you wore that yellow shirt on that on October 5th? Yeah, that was great. You know, and they're just like, uh. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh. <laughs> but I didn't dive right into the liner notes um, for a long time. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I just I I don't know why I wasn't into reading it or or whatever, but uh, too distracted by the music, maybe. Yeah, I assume. Um, yeah, because of course that was the first thing I did is because I was rabid to find out, you know, any information about the band. Um, a lot of great photographs in here, which again are now now they're common. Yes. But, you know, but I I bet at the time these were all. I wouldn't be surprised if all of these were new to people, you know, a lot of Ebet Roberts photos in here that um, are so great. Yeah. There were at the end of special thanks, Greg Hawks, Elliot Easton, David Robson, Rick Ocasek, Benjamin Orr, Peter Thal. I have no idea who that is. Jeff Kramer, mm -hmm. obviously known Elliot Roberts. Mm -hmm. uh, Andy Paley. I have heard that name a lot these last couple of weeks. He, was involved in, uh, I think he was, he knew David Robinson like back in the Modern Lovers days huh. and has worked with Elliot on a lot of stuff. And yeah, he's a, he's a Boston mainstay. They have a, a thank you to Adam Otkasik. Oh yeah, I saw that, I saw that. Uh, who else in here? I don't see my name, which. You know, I'm not in there. Oh, that's me, paint at the very end. Oh, I thought you were Mark Pink. Pete Santini body, and I'm paint. <laughs> and, oh, and you're paint. Okay. Art Direction, Coco, the, Shinomaya, Monster X, and David Robinson. Oh, there's me. I'm Monster X. <laughs> That's you. That's me. Um, the Monster X. Monster X, yeah. We should also note that this is the first Rhino release. Yes. That was put out. And so that, that threw me, too. It's like, Rhino? Well, and they said what something the hell? about that. Let's see. It was released on Rhino in conjunction with Electra Traditions. And Greg said something about, okay, so here it says, uh, is it telling that the cars who recorded all their albums for Electra find their boxed, li their boxed set licensed out? And then here's a quote from Greg. We had approached Electra 
with the idea of doing something like this a couple years ago, says keyboardist Greg Hawks. And for whatever reason, they came back and said, we'd like a new Cars album or, barring that, three or four new Cars tracks. But it never happened. Everybody had a box set out but us. I don't know the extent of the licensing agreement with Rhino. I'm curious, he said. And then an electric mm. Electra spokeswoman said, it's not that we handed the whole thing over, but Rhino is doing all the work. <laughs> Our legal department it really has no comment. <laughs> wow. Yeah, isn't it? I, it's sort of shrouded in mystery, isn't it, this whole uh. anthology? Um, so, yeah, kind of a Rhino getting their fingers in the pie. Oh, they've continued on with it fairly well. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I think also in this release, um, it wasn't in the CD, but it was in the cassette. They had like a little sleeve, a little leaflet in there that said something to the effect of, and coming soon, the car's raw hits and rarities or raw hits and something or other. Um, And that was referring to the debut special edition whatever oh, that's deluxe. what that eventually yeah, yeah the deluxe edition um so that got people going oh my gosh they said this is going to be coming out what's it going to be blah 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 blah. and then it turned into something else but mm-hmm. i i don't recall seeing it i mean, people may correct me if they if they need to but um it it was in the cassette definitely Hmm. And I don't have the cassette anymore because I gave all my cassettes away. <laughs> that was my inheritance you gave away. Yeah, well, I tell you what, <laughs> you can you can go after my buddy Tom, you can go after <laughs> dear Victoria after that stuff and say whatever you want to do. But yeah. I would never. Oh, yeah. My goodness. <laughs> One of the things I want to note is I love um, on the back of the CD case that guitar. Yes, Elliot. That is super cool. Um, they did. That's and also the um, on the discs themselves. Did you already say this? Is it supposed to be like a hubcap? Is that what they've got going on there with the red? Um. Yeah, that's a wheel with a hubcap. Yes, it's definitely. Yeah, that's a wheel with a hubcap. Interesting. And of course, either that or um, uh, one of those port of Weiner um. <laughs> Things on Dr. Pimple Popper. I had no idea what that is. Did you say Dr. Pimple Popper? Dr. Pimple Popper. Sure, what's that show? No. Dr. Pimple Popper. Yeah. What? All right. Some kind of abscess. <laughs> Sounds great. I'm going to stick with Hubcap. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, it's definitely, come on, it's the cars. They gotta, right. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, I thought it was interesting and also very noted oh again with the whole rick and ben thing because in the liner notes greg elliot and david are all quoted but of course nothing from rick and ben and there was somewhere where they said oh in jim sullivan's article neither okasic no nor or who it's no secret remain at odds with each other wanted to speak about the anthology Hmm. and then it goes on to Taco to Greg. Which is quite curious because when Ben started going out with the Orr band, mm-hmm. he would do Fun Time. Yes. Which he would always remark was on this album. Right. But I guess they, maybe they just meant he, they didn't want to talk to the press. Yeah. You know, they didn't want to. Yeah. Yeah, gosh, I'm just so curious what all of that was like, what the conversations were, how it all. Yeah. How I would say out. that that the um, release of this anthology benefited Ben um, to uh, with, with the point of him going back out at it. Right. Drawing attention to him. Drawing again, attention. So that his yes. name, yeah, so his name would draw more. Yep. Yeah, well, I mean, it's a good thing. I mean, like I said, it was really well received, and, and gosh, it's just a great compilation. Yeah, um, and I, I I like the way that it's set up in that it's it goes in chronological order of the yes. albums and the the demos, um, you know, they fit in. I think they're the... they yeah they fit in where they're where they fit in, um, and and the. the you know, when they recorded and, and those kinds of things. Mm-hmm. Um, the only one being left out at the end, Leave or Stay and Tata Weo Weo, which were actually recorded in 77. 
right. as opposed to an 87, which that blew my freaking mind. When I said, <laughs> like, holy crap, those songs were that old. Yeah. But I had heard that You Might Think was a song that they had tossed around for like the debut. Uh, but they just thought that it didn't fit or whatever. Yeah. Gosh, I so, can't remember something about that. Yeah. They must have chose to group those two at the end, though, because they were eventually released on Door to Door. Yeah. Instead of putting them in chronological order. But I was thinking of you because I remember how when the expanded edition started coming out and you were so like, you know, boggled your mind that, you know, I think your quote was something like, you know, the something about the space time continuum being messed <laughs> with because they didn't because they didn't do something like this. And because even, yes. even on the deluxe version of the debut, um, there was a real chronological you know importance to it in that everything that they released with it was all from that time period so um and clearly that's what they did here too they were conscious of putting things in order yeah you know the um let's go down the the, the song listing okay. you've got six songs from the debut yes which um you could put the whole debut on there but yes um it, the thing that struck me about that is they didn't have all mixed up on it. And I thought, man, that's a – but, you know, it was up to the guys, I guess, what songs they wanted to put on there. I couldn't believe that Bye Bye Love was not on there. That was, yeah. To me, that was the meanest trick to do is to have You're All I've Got Tonight end and then yeah. not start Bye Bye Love. I mean, yeah. <laughs> just that messed yeah. with my mind for a while. I would, have, I would have knocked out Don't Just Stop. Me too. Or either one of those two. Exactly. Me too. Um, and then you've got Take Me Now and Cool Fool. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Take Me Now I've already kind of talked about, but that's, that's uh, man, that is, uh, you know, just kind of a haunting song just yeah. because when the vocals have so much reverb in them. <laughs> <laughs> but it's got that early sound to it, you know, mm -hmm. where they hadn't quite figured out what they want to be yet. Right. Um well, cool, cool fool is one of those that reminds you, like, okay, why is it called cool fool? It has nothing to do with the song. <laughs> it's like somebody, it's like some guy from India ripped off their song and named it something else. <laughs> we should look into that, BB. Get on the we case. Should. Get on it, BB. Somebody had ripped off the cars <laughs> before you. Holy crap! Um, well, I want to say um, on "Take Me Now." One of the things that I felt about Take Me Now, okay, so this is my little, my batshit crazy part. Um, two songs that they have ever done made me cry the first time I heard them, like just evoked so much emotion in me that I bawled. One of them, of course, was Wake Me Up, and the other one was Take Me Now. And I, one of the things to me that's different about both of those songs, and, and there are a couple other ones, like um, You Are the Girl is very straightforward, but... There, there are very few songs where I feel like Rick is so obvious in the meaning he's trying to get across or, or the emotion that he's conveying or, you know, the story line of his lyrics. And this was one of them where it was just so painful. I mean, it was, I don't know, I just felt it was so relatable and so clear. And so that was a really emotional one for me. Um, and I do have to comment, too. I have to mention our good friend, John, because I always love whenever anybody posts Take Me Now, John will always comment because the first line is, you were pitched and I was thrown. <laughs> and he always has to comment a baseball reference, <laughs> <laughs> which is just so endearing to me. I just absolutely love it. Because, of course, I always think of it as like being pitched like in a boat on the water. You know, the boat gets pitched. And things go flying out the other side. <laughs> no, you you got it totally wrong. John's got it right. <laughs> it's a ba so it's all about baseball. It's a baseball reference. It's, yeah. It's take me now is like steal the next base. Is that what? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right, right. Okay. What? Oh, and so then the book. Didn't you read the book? They were talking about the playbook, right? Or the rule yes. book? Okay. Yeah, yeah, playbook, rule book, um, scorecard, scorecard, keep you know scoring all that kind of stuff. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, totally that's, baseball. Yeah. Now I. Mm. Okay, there's no yeah. reason for me to cry over that then. I guess I can. <laughs> well, it depends on the team. <laughs> well, that's true. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then Cool Fool, of course, as we know, is co-written by uh, Elliot Easton and Rick Ocasek, the only uh, songwriting or any kind of writing credit that Elliot gets uh, at all. And um, he, let's see, this. I think I had a quote about that. He said... Um, 
They asked him about writing songs. Took Reese a little cool fool. Uh, I don't know. Never mind. Can't find it fast enough. <laughs> <laughs> but there he said go. something about how, you know, he he didn't feel like writing more for the cars because then it would he would be trying to you know rick had such a style that then he would mm. be like trying to write a rick ocasek song instead of trying to write an led song. yeah and i that made so much sense to me yep yeah. so okay go on cool, all right cool. so we go we go into that we could then we go into uh the candio songs let's yeah. go candio dangerous type double life got a lot on my head it's all i can do yay oddly right how did they decide to put in It's All I Can Do? Exactly. If it was not a band favorite. Exactly. What Why? is that? I want to know that conversation. Because... It's a conspiracy, Greg Hawks. Oh, you know, he hated that song. He did. He just didn't like it. He crushed, he crushed our souls, that he Greg did. Hawks. I know. He did. He deflated our little balloons. <laughs> yes, he did. <laughs> he popped baby bird's balloon. Yep. Um, yeah, then... so that was curious. And then the the mm-hmm. unreleased ones, we have our our theme song. Yes. Which, sorry, every time I listen to this, I expect to hear Lizzie's voice. I know, That's, right? What's that now? You're and, listening to Night Thoughts, the Cars yeah. podcast. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, wow. Um, slip away, and then that's it. Yes. So uh, night, this early version of Night Spots, I still like it better than the studio version. Yeah better then hmm. i do yeah i do oh, i can't decide if i like it better or not but i love it so much i think they're just too different to me it's amazing how different they are well they're, they are two different songs yeah i mean well yeah i mean yeah but it's amazing how you know a lot of their demos you see the, that it's the genesis and how it you know took a step over in that direction and became the song this is yeah. several steps away from the the final i think yeah. What do you think? Uh, you know, they've got the like the uh, shake it up demo, okay, which we absolutely love. <laughs> love. <laughs> I can't imagine people in '95 responding well to that. Oh, I wonder. <laughs> I think I would have went, "What the fuck? <laughs> What's wrong with these guys?" <laughs> Holy crap! <laughs> yeah, I never thought about that before. Uh, if there if there could have been bad timing at any time for that, I just was so happy to hear it when we heard it. But maybe I, yeah. maybe we were ready for it. But it, it makes you wonder if out of all this demo material through all these years, if Rhino said, OK, we have all this. What do we want to put on this anthology? And maybe we ought to hold some back just in case, hmm. you know. So, you know, as those expanded editions um, went on right. and we found, you know, we found them putting them in different eras and stuff like that. You know, maybe they just, they ran out. Right. Oh, but come on. You know, there's got to be more similar to the oh, Shake It Up demo with them definitely. just goofing off and, you know. Yeah, but you, you remember what John Hughes told me. It wasn't the fact that they they weren't going to release this. That they didn't have anything to release because it's coming from Rick first. Right, right. And right. if he's not giving them anything, they don't have anything. Yeah, yeah. Dang it. That's why I'm hoping that things change with his estate and and not on the, not on the, the basis that gosh rick's not giving us anything whatever it's a matter of timing you know mm-hmm. he was a busy man busy guy right. and um you know and there's people who who are in charge of his estate now that you know aren't as busy and you know we'll get around to going hey i really want to um put my you know father's legacy or you know out there more and and they'll they'll get around to doing it well, and I think we've talked about this before, too. There's got to be, to me, it would seem logical that there's an element that Rick maybe doesn't really understand how much we love it. Like, he might listen to something and go, that's not good. I don't like the quality of that. I don't like the way this set. Whatever, you know, for whatever reason. Like like with Milkwood, he's embarrassed about that album, you know, whatever. Yeah. But. But we love it. So I think there, yeah. there might be a bridge there where he doesn't understand that, yes, we want all of that stuff that you think is crap. We will eat it with a spoon. Please give it to us. You know? Yeah. And so but maybe, honestly, the, the normal average person, do you think they like that Shake It Up demo? I would think so. Mm, I don't think so. What? That one shocks me that he released it because it's so unstructured. What's not to love about it? It's so well, it's exactly. such a glimpse into their personalities but, and their process. Well, but if I if I 
my okay for example my older brother he likes the cars yeah uh he he bought their albums too but if i said hey listen to this he would go yeah it's nice turn it off (laughs) (laughs) wow you know this is the same brother you know that liked the cars or whatever but i remember playing him send me and him going yeah that's okay what what do you mean okay you know so i i just don't think just for the average fan that it surprises me that he would have released it but then again maybe in his mind it's the average fan isn't going to be buying this stuff. It's going to be the hardcore people. Uh, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Hard to say what goes into that whole decision-making process. And I guess in some ways it is, well, <laughs> I was going to say maybe in some ways it's good. It's not me making those decisions, but but I don't think so. I think I should be the one making those decisions. Oh, yeah. And I say That's release right. it all. called us already. I know. I know, right? Release it all, people. Yeah. Put us in charge of it. <laughs> that's right we'll make that yeah. baby hum that's right <laughs> so the song slip away is slip away is the one um song that what's his name i can't remember now off the top ian of my lloyd? ian lloyd did yeah, yeah let's see let's um see. and this is also one of the first song on here that is also in the monitor mixes which is interesting it's a different version, obviously, than what's on here. Yeah. So when the monitor mixes came out, when people started discovering those, mm-hmm. um, or I should say when Tom discovered, had those out or whatever, mm-hmm. that slip away was like, oh, that's on the anthology. Nice. You know? Yeah. So it was the second time we had, we had heard it. Right. Because um, that, that was never a B-side. That was. No, that was just a. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And same way with That's It. We had, uh, you know, heard or I'd, I'd never heard before when I listened to it on this anthology. Okay. And, but that B-side. Always, always liked this song. Always could never understand why it wasn't on the album. Why did they peg it as a B-side? But then again, with Candy O, I don't think there's any song I would have replaced. Right. I just could only add it to it. But, but you know, that's it is on, with the monitor mixes minus... Um, backing vocals, which is so cool. Yeah. <laughs> I love singing along with it, <laughs> out of tune and everything. Uh, <laughs> but uh, that's, you know, that was it was interesting to have that go. Wow, that was a B side, and only, you know, real, real hardcore fans, you know, knew about it mm-hmm. as a B side. Right. I can see what that it wouldn't. It, to me, it doesn't go with Candio very well. I, I, to me, it could go with Shake It Up. Yeah. But I don't know I that see. it goes with... Because Candio is pretty rocking. Yeah. Yeah, it is. So... Yeah. Well, if if we go on to the Panorama stuff... Oh, uh, Panorama. You got Panorama, Give Me Some Slack, Touch and Go, Don't Tell Me No, and then they have Don't Go to Pieces. Right. And that was another one. Like, why in the hell didn't they put that on the album? But yes. if you think about the whole album... It really don't go to pieces. It kind of fits in with it, but it doesn't. It's not dark enough, it seems. Yeah, I mean, well, I I think it. I definitely think it fits, but I can also see to make a case that it's it's a little bit outside of the box that Panorama was. Yeah. Um, but uh, but the lyric because the, the beat of it and the the music is a little more. Um, poppy maybe than the other panorama songs but the lyrics are just as jerky yeah. you know yeah <laughs> i love that so song so tacky much. in your chrome dip belt <laughs> yeah. god those belts were horrid <laughs> well think there, there's a lot of younger people younger than us that listen to that song love that song they have no idea what the chrome dip belt is i don't know what a chrome dip belt is oh you don't know what it is oh my gosh donna they were ugly as hell they were that. like they were about the width of your pinky, okay? Mm-hmm. And girls would wear these, and they were belts, okay. and they were they were they had that they were gold and other colors too, or whatever. But it, they you know they were shiny. Okay. Um, it was the only way I could describe it is it, it looked like a belt made from licorice, <laughs> <laughs> or you know those you know those um, shoes um, gel shoes or whatever or what it's. Um, they were like plastic shoes that girls would wear. In the back in the old days. 
Jellies? Yeah, back in the... Were they called jellies? Jellies, yeah. yeah. It was like a belt made from jelly <laughs> material. That's what it was. I'm yeah. looking at, trying to look up and see if I can think. But I think I know what you're talking about. I mean, you yeah. described it really well. <laughs> yeah. It's like, yeah, you look so tacky in your chrome dip belt. Yeah, I, I, I agree. Those were <laughs> tacky ass belts. And, you know, and, and at the time, that was real, um, you know, high-waisted pants time yeah. for for fashion. Yeah. And to have those, you know, and you'd have that little chrome, those, those little belts that were just, you know, no bigger than your pinky in width. And then you've got those big belt loops. It was just weird. Yeah. Huh. I'll have to research that. It's kind of like, it's kind of like the uh, zoot suit. You know, those are, <laughs> yeah. you know, those guys that would wear pants up to their chest. Yeah. What is, what is with that? <laughs> <laughs> I never understood that. Yeah. I, I never did. You got to go to the bathroom, you unzip your fly and there's your belly button. <laughs> I don't, I don't get it. Well, on, on the panorama, you know, I was surprised they had as many songs as they did from Panorama. Yeah. Now, they did six from, just... six from the debut, six from Candio, and they only put four from Panorama. But, yes, I'm glad that they put at least four. And they have four from Shake It Up. Mm-hmm. Shake It Up Since You're Gone, I'm Not the One, um, and Cruiser, mm-hmm. which that's pretty awesome they put Cruiser on there. Yeah. And then you've got those two songs – that they put in, um, and the story behind them is that they were at Synchro Sound, mm-hmm. um, or as I like to call it, the Sunglass Hut, or whatever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> whatever it is now. Um, and they they uh, had actually had Iggy Pop come by there, and Iggy Pop heard Ben singing Fun Time and remarking that he sounded more like him than him. Right. Whatever that means, but the little black egg, I love that song. I know, I love it too. And that is one that, matter of fact, I was just listening to it yesterday, where the harmony of it, for whatever reason, that is a song that I can grasp the harmony on and sing and harmonize and do the, that nice. part. And it's so much fun to sing. Nice. Yeah, I think it's really fun to sing. It's such a um, such a little kiddish song. Yes. And the first time I ever heard that song actually was because someone had posted, there's like a Peanuts cartoon yes. Yes. <laughs> with this kite stuck in the tree or whatever it is. Yeah. So, yeah. If so they ever posted that, I would hide them. <laughs> no, it was awesome. Um, so it has that, started out from the beginning having that little kid um, image in my mind. But then just that whole Greg's keyboard part, you know, that kind of winding woo yes. woo woo is yeah. super fun. <laughs> Yeah. Was that the one that B.B. Buell recorded? Yes, both of them. Oh, she did Um, both of them? She did both of them. So it leads me to believe, I think the story behind it is, is that the the, uh, instrumental track to both of these, she just used. Yeah, that's what it says. um, Before Buell erased Orin Ocasek's lead vocals and added her own. Yeah. That must have been crazy to hear those for the first time. Yes. Yeah. And yeah. Little Black Egg is just so different. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, they, they uh, what was the other song? Give Me Some Kind of Time. They said they used to do that one in the early days. Yeah. That'd be interesting to hear. Mm-hmm. But, you know, just in any time they do a cover of something, it's just interesting. I know. Well, and of course, it always goes back to Rick saying that Ben auditioned in air quotes. By singing Yesterday by the Beatles? Yes. Can you imagine? Oh, man. Do you know what song, um, other song the Cars covered that was on this that they uh, they eventually cut? They eventually cut as in they took it off? Yes. Hmm. It was, so you're asking me to make sure I understand the question. A cover there song that a... the Cars did that they yes. originally were going to put on the anthology and then they took off? Yes. Was it yes. in the liner notes? No. Oh, dang it, because I'm already, like, paging through. This is just inside info I have. No, I have no idea. (laughs) I cannot believe you got me with that. It was 623. Oh, my gosh. Gosh darn it. I can't believe I got sucked into that one. Little black egg, fun time. It's 623. Oh, my gosh. 
yelling uh, downstairs and probably my wife's probably woken up what the hell's he yelling about <laughs> down there keep sure about six two being free i imagine it's more that she's like there he goes again with that six two free six two free <laughs> <laughs> all right so it goes into heartbeat city you might think drive of course mm-hmm. magic hello again why can't i have you so that's what one two three four five, five and then they have city. breakaway um which you know as i said before i i had heard before the the biggie on that was was the fact that it was now it was on a cd so right. that was big um or or it was on cassette too because it was only had only been released as a 45 so hmm. that's that's another song where you just listen to it and go why didn't they put it on the album yeah and have we talked about this before i can't remember it's probably because vinyl was limited in size yeah yes and so they probably didn't have enough to make a double album cuz i mean you know cuz there are band you know led zeppelin has like every yeah. song is like 8 minutes long <laughs> <laughs> So, I mean, the bands managed to have more, but you probably had to. Had you to cut double. something out. Yeah, yeah, I guess so. I guess so. And then they include Tonight She Comes. Yep, from the Greatest Hits album. Is, yeah, which, you know, if people didn't buy the Greatest Hits. But that's why they put those, you know, extra songs on there is to entice people to buy mm-hmm. songs they already have. But they didn't necessarily need to do that in this case because you had all this unreleased stuff that people were buying it for right and you are the girl which i love strap me in which i'm eh. door to door complete confusion door to door is such an awesome freaking (laughs) song donna you know because it's so out there it's so out of their element. You'd never expect the cars to do that song. Yeah, well, yes, but, you know, there's a limit. <laughs> there's like, it's so cool when the cars like break out of their normal thing and do something different. Like everything you say with the acoustic and it's so great. Yeah. But then there's like the no, too far, too much. Well, too much to me is um, Rick doing the white cops on dope. <laughs> See, and this is in that, that same category for me. <laughs> but door to door is just kick ass. All right. Well, I just yeah, I just thought it was a curious choice. Three, they only did three songs off of that album. Not surprisingly, yeah. since none of them liked it. But I just thought that was a curious choice. I was surprised they didn't do um, "Coming Up You." Yeah. Didn't put it on there. Because that was even a single. Right. At the very end there, it remember? Didn't. Wasn't that? It was a single yeah. that was released after the band disbanded. Yeah. That whole thing is just so weird. Very. Um, um, and then they have the Leave or Stay and the Tata Weo Weo right. demos right. to finish it off, which, as I said before, just blew my mind that those were that old of songs. But as I read somewhere, that was kind of a um, part of something that kind of irritated other members in the band that they would go back to those old songs Mm -hmm. as opposed to writing something new. Right. Right. Yeah. It was one of the, you know, in in the list of contentions that surrounded that album. I think that was definitely one of them. But the thing about it is Tata, Leave or Stay and Tata Weo Weo are very cars sounding. It was like returning back to, you know, where they began. Yeah. Because, wow, I mean, those, when I listened to Door to Door, those were the two songs that I was like, okay, man, we're, we're, we're still at it. Right. Especially Leave or Stay, you know, at the very beginning of the album. It's like, yeah, we're on it. Yeah. When, oh, I know what year. The, the deluxe edition for the debut came out in 99. So it was, yeah. So it was four years from the the anthology that Rhino put out another album for them, which was their raw hits and prototypes or whatever it was called. Yeah, that was uh, an exciting time Mm -hmm. with with this coming out in 95. uh, Benjamin, you know, starting up touring and doing his stuff, you know, because of it. Mm -hmm. Then in 99, having the deluxe um, 
edition come out. And I can't remember when Candy O came out. The expanded edition? Yeah, it was in the last, what, two years? Because we podcasted about it. So. Yeah, so it would have been 2007. Yeah, just think about that. That's a lot of years in between expanded edition albums. Yeah. <laughs> you well, think about it. For sure, but didn't we talk about how that was probably prompted by the rumblings with the Rock Hall and yeah, because um, they had been nominated a couple of times and didn't didn't do you know didn't get in and then I think that there was some general feeling that they were going to get in in 2018 and um, and pulling it up, Candio and Panorama were released at the same time as I recall because we did our unboxing episode. Yes, remember? that was so fun. Uh, yeah, July 2017. So yeah, and then it was, well, and, oh, it was the Agora album that came out before that, right? And that was just a whole exciting time because it was sort of this cascade of, oh, that's right, because remember the Agora album had that awesome etching on it. Yes. And then we were wondering if the expanded editions would have, and then they did, they continued, you know, with the, the different um, etchings on that side four. Um, and so then, yeah, you had Agora, then you had Candio and Panorama, and then Shake It Up in Heartbeat City. Good stuff. Yeah. Well, hopefully, hopefully we'll see more from Rhino in the future. Yeah. Well, like we, we shall soon see. I know. Come on, Rick's estate. So let me ask you this. 40 songs on here. Of course, we all, we love the new stuff, so not that. But from the album choices, the studio album tracks, what would you have done differently? Um, well, from the debut, I definitely would have put in All Mixed Up or Bye Bye Love. Um, I don't think of I. Don't you stop. Instead of Don't You Stop, yeah. And, you know, like I've said before, I'm not big on Good Times Roll, but they always got to put it in there. Yeah. Um, as far as Candy O goes, I like what they've uh, got in there. Mm-hmm. Candy O, I wouldn't change a thing. Okay. For Panorama, I would have put more in there. Up and Down would have been nice. Oh, yeah. To, to, you Wear Those Eyes would have been nice to have in there. Yeah. Um, down Boys would have been good to be in there. Uh, shake It Up. Hmm. Might have, might have put in Maybe Baby. Really? Yeah. I would not put, I would not have put in... Um, think it over, even though that was a favorite of mine at the time. Yeah. What about um, it is, this could be love? Um, yeah. yeah. Or a dream okay. away. I like a dream away, too. The the studio version or the demo version? <laughs> <laughs> whoop, 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 whoop. <laughs> Wasn't that the, was that the one that sounded like Jungle? That's, that's the cheetah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Walk in high. <laughs> that's right. whoop, whoop, whoop. Uh, um, uh, Heartbeat City. You can't go wrong with any song on Heartbeat City. Yeah, yeah. They 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 hit all the right ones that yeah, they should have hit. I agree. Um, door to door. <laughs> they they should have had more on that. Yeah. Um, they definitely should have had Double Trouble in there. Mm-hmm. And coming up, you. I think you said. And coming up, you. Yeah. Yeah. What about you? Um, kind of the same. I like your choices. Definitely would have had, I would have swapped out Don't You Stop with Bye Bye Love. Um, Panorama, yeah. If if I had to swap something out, I might have swapped out Don't Tell Me No with Running to You. Mm. Um, or Down Boys. Down Boys is so good. Down Boys might have been it, just like you said. Yeah. Um, and then we talked about Shake It Up. Um, this Could Be Love would be a good one. Uh, I, I do have a problem with the way they set this up with three songs from Panorama at the end of disc one and then con- <laughs> continuing on on disc two. It's like I always kind of looked at um, on eight track tapes. You know, there was always one song that got chopped in half. Yeah. And it's like, OK, why they chop that fucking song in half? Well, it's the same thing with with the album. Yeah. And then it's like, what are you doing that to Panorama for? <laughs> You know, they, they could have added some extra demo stuff and then started disc two with Panorama. Well, but you know what it guaranteed for me was that I was going to 
listen to both discs because I I tend to only listen to the first one the most, but then at the end of the first one, then I'm always like, well, I'll just put in the second one because I want to finish listening to the panorama part of it. Um, and then, of course, you get, then you then I, then I put the second disc in and I'm happy I did because then you get, you know, Little Black Egg and Fun Time and it just carries on. But I do tend to stay on that first disc because it's got the good ones on it. I don't know how much truth there is to this, but it's, it seems to me I've heard that they're not even scratching the surface as far as available space on um, discs now. You know, like they could always put so much more. Really? Especially with DVDs, yeah. And I know there's a limit because I've, you know, put stuff on CD and it says not right. enough space and blah, blah, blah. But it seems like 20 songs, there should be more room than for just 20 songs. On a disc. I think because that's because I've made discs too. I can I get like eighteen to twenty, depending on the length of the song. I just think technology wise, they should be able to pack more onto the. Yeah. But you know that's why we have thumb drives now, right? Because you can. That is correct. <laughs> you can put entire album collections on there. Yep. Very All good. right. All right. What's next? Oh. I'm glad we talked about this one. Uh, next is Midnight Scroll. We yeah. do have uh, put the food dealers out there for any any kind of um, question. Oh, nice. From our Facebook page. And uh, so I have that. So roll that scroll music. Here we go. All right. So our first one is from uh, Deanna. She posted this on our Facebook page. Okay. And she writes, yeah, another podcast episode. <laughs> Donna may know the answer since she is Team Benjamin. Oh, boy. So, Deanna, you're calling me an idiot. <laughs> I would know the answer. You are an idiot. You like turbocharge. I'm an idiot. <laughs> recommended it um in the cars benjamin played the bass but in other bands he played the guitar did he have a preference between the bass or guitar yes indeedly he did he preferred the bass uh, the rhythm guitar he said that in interviews before and he's even gone as far as to say he never has tried to be the world's best bass player he just played the bass in the cars because that's what they needed was a bass player huh i heard he was in like in a friendly competition with Greg Hawks on who is the better slide whistle player. <laughs> I do believe. Yes. I believe I've heard that before. Damn. That's another question. We need it. We need a part three, Greg. <laughs> okay. Greg, what was the deal with the slide whistle competition? <laughs> Wouldn't it be funny to ask him questions like that? Like stuff that's just assumed, like this is a piece of history. So what's the answer? And he'd be like, uh, gee, I don't remember that at all. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yes. Yeah, so anyway, yes, Ben preferred the rhythm guitar. And that is why a lot of people have actually asked also why there's not a bass guitar on his tombstone. He has a, there's a rhythm guitar on his on his st stone. And it's because that's what he preferred to play. Wow. You know, I, one thing I recall when he played drive, um, you know, in the late 90s, mm -hmm. he would he would still just like do the bass part mm -hmm. with the guitar. Just boom. Boom, boom. Yeah. Boom, boom, boom. All right. Well, our, our last thing, um, I was thinking this week, you know, we're coming up with the podcast and, and all the stuff that happened to our buddy BB. I was like, you know, how can you cheer up BB? And I was thinking, oh, Rico email. No, but no. Unfortunately, Rico is passed on. I was going to uh, say, he, yeah, he, you can't re he's, resurrect he's him. Gone. Well, I can. Oh. Because we have an email from Zombie Rico. Oh, no, you're kidding. Oh, seriously, it's from Zombie Rico. Oh, my gosh. Greetings, <laughs> podcast friends. What? Me, Rico. <laughs> hey, fucking brains. <laughs> nom, nom, nom. There you go, BB. <laughs> Little message from Zombie Rico. <laughs> he's live <laughs> and wandering near. He's wandering. <laughs> he's wandering Staten Island. <laughs> oh my gosh! Yeah. Spreading the corona. <laughs> Spreading the corona. <laughs> oh my 
gosh. Well, that was a shock. Yeah. Well, wow. There you go. Thanks Sometimes for that. Sometimes they come back. Yeah. <laughs> I guess so. Yeah. I guess they, you know who I wish would come back is El Glenn Duche. <laughs> uh, where is that guy? I don't know. I'd have to look him up and get, get him back in my head. Yeah, he was a fave. <laughs> yeah. <El Glenn. laughs> All right. Well, that, right. that does it for episode 60. Holy crap, Donna. 60 episodes. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I I just I'm you know I'm not trying to brag but I think that's pretty impressive. That we get that we've milked it for sixty. <laughs> yeah. I think you're, I think you're right. Because <laughs> when we started it was just like eh. You know, yeah. Eh, we'll see. And, and you know I don't think it's bragging to say at least thirty of them are good. <laughs> <laughs> that's half. At least half. Right. At least thirty of them are good. <laughs> and there's still stuff we haven't talked about yet. So yeah. We haven't done yeah. Ben's album. We haven't yep. done Elliot's album. Yep. We, we we got some stuff we still we can still talk about. We've got so. to get moving in stereo on this podcast. Yes, moving in stereo oh. if you're listening. Yes, and you better be. God, I got to see them again. I, know. I don't know how. I know. But I've got to. I know. I, I can't help it. I'm a fan. And those guys better get on it and get those fucking shirts going. Yeah, what is oh, they're they're so suspiciously silent on that subject. Yes. And it bugs why, me. That's we're, that's the first thing. It? We're gonna corner them first thing yes. when they get on the podcast. We'll just confront yes. them right and away. Say, Come on. I don't I'm not expecting a free one. Right. I'll I'll pay for it. Take my money, please. Just make a freaking shirt. Make a shirt that doesn't infringe on any copyright. Well yeah, they've got their I own mean, original you're... logo, right? Yeah, hell yeah. Yeah. Noah's Get drum the, head is logo. awesome. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Just give me a shirt with that drum head logo on there. Exactly. Boom. I'm there. Please. Because we're fans. Big fans. Yeah. Huge. I mean, it's it's one thing to go and see your favorite band over and over, but when you like a cover band <laughs> so much That's so that serious. you want to see them over and over. They got to be rock. good. Yeah, because they, they are they so good. That's why we have to, at some point, we have to do at least one Cars Con because it, and it has to be, involve them. It has to. That's the perfect excuse to get yes. to go see them again. And if it's a weekend yeah. thing, they, we could have them play, <laughs> they'll be at our beck and call. They, we have them play anytime we want. <laughs> <laughs> 3 a.m. Lars. Lars. <laughs> Not, hey. Exactly. Hotel door. Yeah, I'm getting the guys up. Yeah, come on. Please. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> I don't wear your jammies. I don't care. I said, yeah, we don't care what you look like. Just get up there and play. <laughs> now I got this vision of Danny and Tidy Whitey's up there. Oh yeah, because you know he would not bed. put he would not put a stitch of pants on. <laughs> There's no it's way. Check, check, it's checkered Tidy Whitey's. <laughs> <laughs> Panorama flag undies. <laughs> <laughs> and he'll just and he'd totally be too like you, you asked for it, this is what you get. I don't want to hear a word of yeah, complaint about what That's I'm exactly wearing. Right. What exactly what pajamas right. do you think they all would wear? Who would be in footy pajamas? <laughs> Which one do you think Matt? Do you think Matt would be in footy pajamas? No. Maybe. I don't know. Because I, I think Natalie would, would buy footy pajamas for him and think it would be really cute <laughs> for him to be in his, you know, little teddy bear jammies. Now now I got this vision of him in the uh uh, Christmas story, uh, rabbit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Big ears bent flopped over. All right. Well, that'll yeah. be, that'll be question number two. Number one for them will be where are the t-shirts? Number two is what pajamas are you wearing right now? Cause we know you're in pajamas. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So we'll get that nailed down. We'll get that episode going. Yeah. Gotta do that. Yeah. And we, we appreciate our listenership and, uh, we'll just, you know, keep putting them out as we can. Yep. <laughs> this is super right. fun. All right, so that, that'll uh, do our show. By the way, um, a little uh, side note, you might find that in time, I'm not sure how long it will take, but we will not be available on SoundCloud or iTunes at some point. Why? Because it costs money yeah. uh, to, to store the files and so forth. And YouTube is fucking free. <laughs> so um, unless you want Don and I to, to start up one of those patreons which i'm not really crazy about um yeah you might find that um you know you have to do that 
So YouTube is going to be the the area. Everything will always stay on YouTube, but I'm not sure how that works. If I don't pay my uh, money every month to SoundCloud, how long they keep, mm -hmm. or if I just can't add new stuff or what the deal is. So right. it may be a situation where you can still find all the old stuff on iTunes and SoundCloud, but any new stuff that we put out starting with this episode um, will just be YouTube. Okay. And we'll have to see about it getting some maybe a new ending recorded yeah all right so that'll do it for episode 60 thanks for listening and we will see you next time bye hey greetings to you my podcast friends hey it's me your old pal rico night thoughts the cause podcast is not directly affiliated with the cause or randall records so we don't end up swimming with the fishes here's how the whole thing goes down under section 107 of the fucking Copyright Act of 1976, we got some fair use rights here. Like busting people's balls over things we don't like. Telling you how shit went down. Teaching you schmo something new. And digging up dirt about the most fantastical band in the world, the Cass. You know how fair use is permitted by copyright statute that might other infringe on other fucking rights? Yeah, it's like that. The fact we don't make no money, we record this podcast for personal use, and teach you stuff so you're not a fucking moron, tips the balance of our podcast shenanigans in favor of fair use. So there you have it. Capiche? <laughs>